Today, I'm going to share eight common mistakes that organizations make as they're building their public cloud IaaS and PaaS strategy. Let's get started. Welcome back to Pluralsight's Head in the Cloud, everyone. My name's Elias Kineser, and today's question is, what are the common mistakes that organizations make when they're building their public cloud IaaS and PaaS strategy? Now, if this is the type of content that you like, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you're alerted the next time we upload a video. And don't forget to check out Pluralsight's library of IT courses. There's a ton of courses on cloud strategy, on cloud implementation, on cloud provider certifications, and a ton of other tech-related courses that you or a member of your team can benefit from, especially if your organization is going through an upskilling project. Common mistake number one, building a document that is geared more towards IT rather than the business. You've heard me say it in the first two episodes a lot about how to design a document that is geared more towards the business as opposed to IT. If you haven't seen the first two episodes, we're gonna make sure that there's links to them in the description and probably somewhere up here as well. There are no IT projects. There are only business projects and business outcomes. The sooner IT comes to this realization, the better it is. Don't write an IT-related document. Write a business document that an executive can understand and can value. If IT is leading cloud, you're going to start having conversations on cost and obsessing about costs and complexities, and you're going to trade one hosting and virtualization platform for another hosting and virtualization platform, and the business is gonna take a step back and say, why is this costing me so much money? Or why did you do this? Or who told you to do this? So again, don't write a document that is geared towards IT. Common mistake number two, writing a very long document. Now, typically when documents are very long, that's because again, you've written an IT specific document. But just in case you wrote a very long business specific document, remember your executives, I, you know, your business leaders, their attention span is very, very short. If you go and write a 20 page document, I can guarantee you, no one's going to read it. So make sure your cloud strategy is between five to seven pages and make sure that your cloud strategy document always has a companion PowerPoint presentation that you can present to executives any time that you need to. Common mistake number three, not circulating the document. We're never going to get full consensus over everything that we put in our cloud strategy. People are always going to have different opinions, but it is important to circulate the document, to gather all of the information, to gather, gather all of the viewpoints. Oftentimes you're going to find there's very, very good advice out there from people that you least expect it to get it from. So make sure that the document is well circulated so that when the business asks if there's buy-in from all the different stakeholders, you have a very solid argument to make at that point. Common mistake number four, not appointing someone that is responsible for driving this project. So oftentimes I've seen cloud projects that are trying to be designed or documented or built by committee. You know, there's more than one person that's involved. They're not on the same page. That is a big mistake. Remember the Trinity that we talked about in the first episode. In order to build your cloud strategy, you need to have your CIO, your cloud architect, your business architect, your enterprise architect, and your business sponsor. Your cloud architect is the person that's going to drive the project. That is the person that's responsible. That is the person that the CIO is going to hold accountable for the lack of progress, or maybe for the incredible success of the project and give them kudos. But you have one person that is responsible to lead this project, to coordinate everything and to document. Common mistake number five, not having business sponsorship. It's crucial to have buy-in from the business when you're developing the strategy. The last thing that you wanna do is build a cloud strategy, spend all of this money, and then someone says, who told you to do that? Or what is the benefit of that? Or why are we even doing that? So we wanna do two things here. We wanna be able to tell them how great cloud is, right? But we want them to tell us how we can then leverage it. That is a match made in heaven, and that is what you should be aiming for. Common mistake number six, not having an exit strategy. Now, exit strategy does not necessarily mean that you're going to exit the cloud provider or that the application is going to exit that public cloud provider. There is an exercise around exit strategy. So if your organization is trying to bring in a new application, there is an exit strategy stress test that we have to do against the provider of that application to understand 
are options. I'll give you a small example. If you are in higher education and you've decided to leverage a software as a service, the first thing that I would advise you to do is figure out who else plays in this space. Should you ever want to leave this SaaS provider, is there an alternative? Because all SaaS providers will tell you, well, I'll give you the data if you ever wanna exit. Folks, the data is useless if there's nowhere to ingest, import the data, and be able to manipulate it. So it's crucial to understand what my exit strategy is going to look like, even if I never plan on exiting. Common mistake number seven, confusing the cloud strategy document and the cloud implementation plan. The cloud strategy document is a business document. The cloud implementation plan is an IT document that will focus on things like frameworks, like best practices, like the schedules, like uh, the, the steps that things need to be moved in, etc. And then finally, common mistake number eight is around success metrics, not having success metrics. It's crucial to know what good looks like. How do we know that we're making progress? This is where your CIO can step in and define, set the success metrics and tell you, we need to accomplish A, B, C in order for this project to be successful. Those success metrics have to be blessed also by the business so that when we succeed, we are able to say, we've hit all of the success metrics that we set out to do in the first place. I hope this video was informative. If you like this type of content, don't forget to check out Pluralsight's library of IT skills, whether it's for you or someone within your organization. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I hope this episode and this entire series was very beneficial and I will see you in the next one.